Um, I'm going to read a few poems, and I want to read a chapter, I guess, or a section from uh, another manuscript I just finished. Um, so I will start with these poems. Uh, this is, I wrote a poem about my friend uh, Mike May, and it's called Mike May. Rohini dropped me at a coffee shop, but the shop turned out to be a restaurant, so I could not stay. I waited on the bench outside, and somebody I knew came by. She had come to eat, and we smiled and talked a few minutes before she went inside, and I left. I was embarrassed. It was 9 a.m., and I was drunk. I walked without a place to go. I listened to music, and a song made me think of you. Then playing Bob Dylan songs at the Watts with you when Rick's amplifier broke, and E sang so loud you couldn't hear the other singers at all. And I thought of the movie where they play that same song with the dead girl hoisted on stage, and all of this made me want to talk to you. Like meeting in Los Angeles when I had walked through the tents and cardboard houses, through a little alleyway, to where you were with your van, and I told you immediately about the dreams I was having, because I knew that I could. Mike. This week I sat with a woman and her son as she was dying and I am not sure what to do with it. Maybe this, or what is this I am doing? I'm not sure how to deal with poems, but sometimes I feel a solitude so real and immaculate it begins to crush me, like my heart is a small city broken by its own sky. And even though the clouds are pleasant and necessary, they are too much for me and I cannot move beneath them. When I feel this way, I want to do everything, say everything, be with everybody at once, as if this totality of action will prove I am visible and alive. I walked through the park and the trees smelled like morning in the mountains. I walked across the highway bridge where there are pieces of broken glass on the sidewalk. They are all kinds of colours. Blue, red, yellow, and they never move. Nobody comes to remove them. Shattered, they shimmer in the sun. Traditional hill. Somewhere the axe came down and the hills were awarded names. We heard the split and dwelt there in crisis, a free-for-all. <laughs> I've been born so many times this, this morning, but still do not grow tired learning to breathe, moving, prone, blocked, and inverted for the shoreline. These second chances we have to shake loose settlements, make solid, dreamt battalions, these bluffs where we hide from each other, these towers already abandoned. This is a poem about the Wonder Years. It's in two parts. It's called The Wonder Years, part one. <laughs> oh, Winnie Cooper, you fucked Fred Savage in a barn the day before 4th of July, which would become your departure. The moment life collapsed into voiceover, a ticker tape parade folded in on itself, and Dad, Dad died, but Wayne turned out just fine. Would you have done it if you knew, Winnie Cooper? Were you thinking about Paul? Part two. <laughs> But it was you, Karen Arnold. I was always sweet on you. In a dream, we went camping and ate marmite sandwiches. In the evening, you unpacked the clockwork city from your father's duffel. We watched the tiny people home from work over dinner and your face lit blue by their televisions. Do you remember this, Karen Arnold? I could have cried when you moved in with David Schwimmer. You said there was nowhere else to go. But Karen, you know, you could have moved in with me.